Okay, today we have a um, Epiphone uh, limited edition custom shop SGG400. I believe that is what it's called. I believe this is from 2008. Um, I've had a lot of experience with Epiphones. Uh, I really have. And I have noticed um, a lot of the mid 2000 ones. And that's really comfortable. They're really, they feel like rolled and worn. There's no sharp frets. I mean, they're really. Get it. I'm going to give a big hats off uh, to Epiphone in that regard. And this is about the, probably the 10th, uh, somewhere in that mid 2000s era that um, I've come across uh, just these necks feeling like <laughs> the frets are great. The fret work is really great. I think a lot of these were made in Korea. I don't know. I was told it was made in China. I have no idea. There's a nice big white spot here where there was a sticker that said something. And that's the custom shop or whatever, the limited edition custom shop logo on the back. Grover tuners. Uh, got some of the typical, actually not too much on the headstock here. There's something over here. Which of course is gonna be like impossible to show up. Oh, maybe I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, there's a uh had a nice nice chunk taken there. There's a little discoloration. Um a little discoloration oh uh, and on the back of the there's a nice chunk there. I mean that's typical for these guitars, um, but otherwise I mean, the condition is very, very, very good. No sharp frets, no dead frets, no fret fuzz that I can find. Um, truss rod and everything works perfectly. Um, nut is cut really well, as far as I can tell. I'm not seeing, I mean, I, I'm not finding any dead frets. Not dead frets. Fuzzing. Anyway, um, um, Whoever does buy this, I did a massive clean on the hardware for you. You're welcome. <laughs> I got all the tarnish off. I polished up the frets real nice. I mean, this guitar has zero fretware. Zero fretware. Not even... I don't know. No, none. None. Definitely another, um, another somebody wanted to have an SG, somebody bought an Epiphone, they probably played it three times, they threw it in a closet for 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, left the strings on it, and I had to pick up all the pieces. Um, actually not a horrible amount of pickup scratches, I mean it's been played, but not, uh, it's going to see worse, um, it has the old, uh, somebody moved around the top pets, I think, uh, it's one of these, it's just, it's just like volume and tone, even though these are both volumes. I mean, look, $9.99 on Amazon. If somebody wants me to buy it and do, the, do it before they possibly buy this guitar, no problem. That's even if I still decide to sell it, because I got to tell you, I really like it. Um, I mean, you know, I'm selling it for cheap. I bought it for cheap. I'm selling it to someone else for cheap. Not too much, really not too much wear on this body. There's some, it's going to be really hard to... Um, to get on the video you know there's a ding there but none of the like none of the oh my god like can you believe they did this to the guitar kind of wear a scuff here a scuff there the grover tuners work really nice um let me see if i can get the serial number in there i'll try and post it um weirdest strap buttons i've ever seen there's no way these are original it's like a, a cylinder. It's on each side. So I'm guessing these are some sort of locking, uh, some sort of strap lock uh, type things here. If I can, if I have a set, which I might, I'll put uh, a standard set of uh, strap buttons on here. Uh, but we'll see. But um, functions perfectly. Oh, and there's some by the input jack. The classic. Somebody cranked it down too hard. And see, if, if it's this hard to show up on camera. You know, how worried are we really? Uh, but, you know, somebody tried to crank it down a little too much. They put a few, there it is, a few splits around it. Otherwise, it functions uh, flawlessly here. We're going to go into the Vox AC30 because, 
I've only had this for a few minutes, um, and I noticed the pickups are really, really, um, they seem kind of low output, very vintagey. So we're going to try and, uh, we're going to try, like, yeah, they seem to have a very vintage low output, so we're going to see if we can get some, uh, nice classic rock sounds. It sounds good acoustically. Something somebody told me once. Sounds good acoustically, it'll sound good plugged in. I don't know how true that is, but. Unfortunately, right now it's a little bassy. Actually, let me get a little bit into the, uh, uh, let me see if I can get, it's just a little, I mean, I'm playing through a 212 at low volume, so. Wait, what am I on now? I'm on a complete different channel. Switching between um, the top boost and the normal on the box, I'm noticing quite a bit, quite an array of them. Um, uh, and by adjusting the bass and treble, just a tad. At first, I was thinking these pickups might be a little bit muddy. And again, I said, um, you know, by doing these, because I'm posting this video on my reverb, I'm posting it on my uh, actual YouTube, so I want the information out there. You know, um, again, like I want people to know exactly what they're getting or don't get. I might keep it. I'm still, I'm still undecided. Um, also has just one last thing while I was, I was doing this that surprised me. Um, it has one of those lock tone or those locking, uh, uh, tail pieces here. That surprised me for, for, oh wait, I didn't think that was there. But, um, so yeah, apparently I thought it was going to be, these pickups were a little bit muddy, but I'm not hearing that right now. <laughs> strings even though I did the, the whole fun pulley pull the string thing difference on the middle position when you're uh, distorted but you know boy this neck by the way this neck is thin holy moly is this neck thin 
It's really thin. Boy, I should have put on a blues track for a minute. Really, really, really bluesy. Um, yeah, everything's everything's solid on this. Of course, the SG. Next dive. It wouldn't be any other way. Uh, let's see if I can get a little bit of clean out of it. Let's see. I'm back to the normal channel, so I don't have any control over the EQ. This is just right through the through the AC30. Uh, Pushing the amp a little, actually. Uh, I'm pushing the amp just a tad, but anyway, I don't want to do too much on the. Uh, just wanted to get a decent, clean sound here. There's nothing wrong with the guitar. I just turned the amp way down because it's very, very late. Um, so, uh, and let's give it the old. Let's give it the old Marshall shred for a minute. I mean, this amp, this amp will make anything scream. So. <laughs> You know, don't be surprised. I feel like it maintains a bit of that vintage uh, appointment, but anyway, um, hmm. I like, I like it. Change the strap buttons. I really like how I really like how this white aged. I really, I gotta say, I mean, I'm kind of, I have the yellow light kind of going a little bit in this room, but like, you can really see how stark white it was and how how yellow uh, aged it is now. Really, really digging the color. Um, also it came with this. Stupid nice case. This is an SKB, like, I mean, wonder if it's like one of those, like, flight cases or whatever. Um, great condition. Really, really have to do the SKB molded case. Uh, this is, yes, this is a TSA case. So it has a TSA case included. So, anyway, um, um, for a quick wrap up of both here because again uh, I think I explained anything for anyone who might be interested in um, purchasing the guitar whether through my YouTube or again through uh, my reverb but as I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little bit longer into the review here for people watching the uh, my YouTube channel so <clears throat> when it comes to Epiphone I remember in 2020, and I was excited about this too. And I have, I've had, I had some 2020s. At one point, I had, I don't know, four or five of them. And I've actually sold them pretty much all the way down to just one. You know, it's not a not a fair comparison, but I do have a. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna get it out. Um, I have a 2020 SG uh, uh, worn with the P90s. It's really not the same. So, what? I, what Epiphone was doing with the, with adding the whole CTS pots and with adding the Graphtech nuts and with adding, you know, 
they still didn't really do anything about the pickups. And in fact, every newer Epiphone I had, I where they definitely, I feel like they definitely stopped spending as much time on is the is the neck and the feeling of the neck and the, and the the frets and the fret spout and I I have had uh, yeah like I said at least ten of these like um, mid two thousands and early two thousands Epiphones where the necks have been really supreme and honestly the pickups are the same to me I don't think there's anything different about the new Epiphone pickups or, or newer Epiphone pickups I think they're terrible I actually find I actually am a little surprised by these. Uh, because they seem to have more character, uh, a lot more character uh, than than you would expect from Epiphone pickups, um, from what I'm from what I'm hearing now, and they they're they're producing kind of a vintage vibe with this you know vintage uh, feeling and looking guitar. So I guess they were using because this is supposedly a custom shop. I don't know what that means. Please comment. Anyone give you know more about what an Epiphone custom shop is versus just an Epiphone. I don't know if that's just something they do to just, I don't imagine they have a custom shop, you know, uh, versus a regular shop. They just do a few different things, but I guess what made it custom, again, the Grover Tuners, they did have this locking um, tail, uh, tail piece here. That was a little bit of a surprise. Um, I do feel like these pickups have quite a bit of character um, uh, versus a lot of the other Epiphone pickups that I've, that I've played. Um, and they're very specked out to be a little more vintage. I know I just said that, but, but yeah, it's, um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like Epiphone was giving you a better body and a better feel. And now they're trying to give you a better guitar with less feel and less work into, into, and less work into it. Again, these just, this is it's like 10 of these things. The next... Are incredible. I've had to file down every single fret of every single Epiphone from 2020 on, and I had to send one back because the fret job was so bad. I had to send one back because the, the nut was absolutely banged out of place, or, or almost actually like not banged out of place, it was like uh, almost cut out. And it, it, it was indented really bad. Um, I had, um, I've had a lot, uh, I, again, I ha I've had five of them, I'm down to two of them. And I've also uh, bought and sold uh, a lot of them, uh, too, where just the, the fretwork is really, really, really terrible. Um, so I'm not exactly sure sure what they're trying to do, but I feel like these are definitely better guitars. And if I all I would do is throw pickups in. I don't know if having the CTS pots is going to make a difference, to be honest with you. Um Unless you're really like, I mean, it depends on what you're doing. Are you trying to get a completely natural sound right into your recorder? Or do you have, you know, more modern technology where you can shape the sound? You know, that's up to you. You know, And uh, as far as durability, again, are CTS pots more durable? You know, they should be. And I have no idea what pots are in this guitar at all. I did not take this back plate off and I have no idea what's in here. But, um, and I have no idea if this is Switchcraft or... Just some sort of, you know, or if it's a switchcraft jack or anything like that. I have no idea what they were using uh, back in 2008. But what I can tell you is this switch is solid. My God. This switch is really solid, whatever it is. Um, the hardware is solid. Um, and again, for back then too, I don't know how long they were doing this, but you can, you, uh, you don't have to use the wheels. You can just use a flathead screwdriver too to adjust uh, the action. Um you know, from your bridge here, that was a nice thing. Uh, that was a nice thing I, I noticed because when I first strung it up, you know, I eye everything up because I've, been, I've strung so many guitars, I have a decent idea, and I went, boy, these this low E and A, I was like, boy, they're really, really just a little high. And I was trying to twist it and turn it, I'm like, oh my God, I need God strength here. And I went, oh, I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver. One, two, stupid easy. <laughs> that was a great, great adjustment. Uh, and again, too, there's always the debate on the Epiphone headstock. I don't know. I f as long as it's not the acoustics, the acoustic headstocks or the casinos or the three three fives or or the, the older Lucille, just that that big long like skinny middle with the huge fat head. I know this is similar, and I and I do prefer the newer headstock, but on the electrics, I don't know. This doesn't bother me that much, as long as it's not one of those. Big, long, acoustic ones. They're just huge. 
Um, so yeah, tell me your thoughts on Epiphone, but uh, and especially newer Epiphone versus, versus older uh, Epiphone. But to me, the next feel and playability are definitely, definitely better on uh, these older models versus the newer models, by far. Um, I haven't had a single one of the five I bought and the probably 10 I bought and sold, not a single one felt like this. Boy, it almost feels like the, it almost feels like the Sire next. It's really nice. It is really, really nice. Really comfortable rolled in. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Uh, anyway, there's another video. Check you guys out soon. Thanks.